Dibling, in this video series, we will be uh, discussing about the design of um, wood frame building um, in Canada. So, let me check. I should say this is structural design. So structural design of a one-story wood frame building in Canada. So this is like just a basic uh, design. I will show you how it is done uh, based on Canadian uh, code. Um, so in our today's topic, so we will just be discussing for now, we will be discuss, uh, discussing the uh, design references and um, standards that I used. And then the next one is the uh, different uh, um, tools and uh, design resources that uh, I use. Um, so for the design reference and standard, um, so since I am in uh, Alberta, we will be using the uh, National Building Code of Canada, Alberta edition. So if you are um, from Ontario or any other provinces, then you have to use the, whatever is uh, applicable in your uh, province. I think, uh, for example, in BC, you have to use the uh, British Columbia Building Code, the Ontario Building Code for uh, in Ontario, and then in other territories, I think they are still using the National Building Code of Canada. And then, uh, of course, this is a wood frame building, so we will be uh, referring or uh, using the um, CSA 086, which is the um, engineering design in wood. Um, for design resources and tools, I typically use this, um, so jabacos.com and then 40 web uh, by Weyerhauser. So they have a free uh, software that you can use in the design. And of course, if you are using their software, then you will be specifying their products. So, and then the other one is, which I like use most of the time is uh, um, MS, uh, not MS Office Excel, MS, so Microsoft Excel uh, spreadsheets. So the intended audience for this uh, video series would be, since this is just like a basic uh, design, so the intended audience um, are the non-structural professionals. So it's more of like a coordination, uh, sometimes um, at initial stage of, um, of the project, then typically the architect would prepare all the, um, the plans and um, this will give them an idea um, how, how the, the, the building would be, um, frame or design structurally and then uh, for mechanical as well uh, for electrical and other professionals and then uh, the next one are the um, structural uh, engineer in training so if you are new like graduates and uh, you are into structural design um, then uh, uh, this video is also for you and then uh, the last but not the least um, are the internationally trained uh, engineers. So if you are a uh, newcomer to Canada, if you are a structural engineer from, from wherever country you came from, um, then you can use this as your guide if you want to uh, pursue your uh, career in, uh, in Canada. So for the, for the National Building Code um, Alberta edition, you can, you can download a free uh, uh, PDF. So if you go to, so if you Google the um, Alberta Building Code and then you go to to um, National Building Code, the uh, the current one is 2019. This one here, 2019 Alberta Edition. Um, if you click on this one, and then you go down. So if you want the binder, the the hard copy, you can buy. Uh, it's, uh, it says here $100, that's for the binder if you want the hard copy. And then uh, 
of course, there's a free, like, it started, I think, this year or last year, I think. So, before, we we have to buy the, uh, the PDF version as well. And then now, they are offering it for free, which is really good. So, if you click on this one, in RC Publications Archive, and then uh, on this one here, download. So, you can download the final version. So I already downloaded it. So we will go directly to the. Uh, so here it's the National Building Code uh, 2019 Alberta edition. So make sure that if you are from another province, then of course you have to use uh, uh, your own uh, building code. For this, for this entire video series, I will be uh, using the Alberta uh, building code. So if you go to for structural, so um, for structural, uh, it would be part four. Uh, let's go directly to page three nine three. So this is um, for the structural section, the structural design. So this is page uh, three ninety three, right? So so we have this uh, everything here like general. Uh, information, load, loads and effects, limit states design. So everything here like occupancy live load, you can find the occupancy live load, load combinations. I think it's it's the same for, I would say, um, like Canada and US, it's the same like loadings. Uh, I know like in the Philippines, it's the same as well because we copied our like almost the entire code from, from the US. So it would it, it explains here like it will uh, basically uh, guide you like uh, what are the different like did loads to consider and then um, live loads and then climatic and uh, seismic loads. So in the future video we will be discussing it like each load like one by one like how to get those uh, loads how to calculate for uh, snow loads like snow drift in 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 your area. So. I will just uh, show you a quick uh, so for the uh, climatic data is 605. So page 605 of the uh, building code, this is the appendix C. This, uh, this is where you find all the um, information with regards to um, um, wind load, uh, snow load, rain load in each uh, um, specific um, town or uh, province. In, 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 in Alberta, of course, it will be showing just the Alberta towns and uh, cities, but if you are uh, using the National Building Code itself of Canada, then you will see all provinces and territories and, their, and then um, some selective, uh, selected um, uh, towns and cities. So, so this is just a, like a quick like rundown of everything like from design standards and references and then um, the resources and tools that I used. The, the proper or the, the actual design would be in the next video. We will start with uh, the, um, learning how to calculate for the dead loads, um, live loads, um, is no loads, uh, seismic loads. So if we go back to the um, resources and tools that I use, so first is jabacos.com. So if you if you open if you search uh, jabacos.com, if you go back to if you search for jabacos.com, then um, you would see here like NBC 2020, 2015, 2010, then 2005. So if you click on this one, it says here for snow is still uh, they're still working on on the on the program, so it's still coming soon, and then wind also coming soon, and then seismic. So if you click to this section here, you will only see one, this which is for seismic calculation. So they are still working on this one. So the National Building Code, uh, the 2019 Alberta Building Code. Um, was based on the 2015 National Building Code. So if you go here, see loads 
in BC 2015. So if, if you click on this one, this is this is complete already. So you have the roof snow load, then snow drift. If it's like a different uh, roof elevation, then you select this snow drift uh, step. Then snow drift load obstructions. If you are, for example, if you are in a a, a in in a roof and then there is a billboard or a rooftop unit that would potentially create a snow drift then you go for this one it's no drift obstruction then um primary structures this is for the wind so this one here wind and then uh, we'll just uh, go through this with um these um sections here and then we which uh, we will uh, check one by one here after and then this one walls if you have if you are designing the, the walls itself so design of like um um wall studs or wall columns so this is where you uh get the um the values that you have to use and then freestanding plates and uh walls and billboards so if you have like um billboards um you have elevated uh, like walls above above ground walls then you can use this one here and then seismic uh, equivalent or seismic calculation using the equivalent static method so so for seismic you have the equivalent static method and the dynamic analysis but this one this is only for um, uh, equivalent static method so for example for roof snow load then if you click on that one, of course, uh, you can input your project uh, information like uh, project name, then your name here if you're the designer, and then I think this date it updates automatically, I guess, because last time you have to input the actual date. But for this, for this, uh, for this update, it's already um, um, automatically added like the date. So. For pro pro provinces and territories, then these are the like um, nine provinces and uh, or nine or ten. <laughs> I forget. So and then the three territories, the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and the Nunavut. Um, so for example, uh, in Alberta, and then the location you have to check. So. For example, I'm in Grand Prairie, but if you notice, there is no Grand Cache, right? So if you if you know the um, or if it's not if if the town where you live or your project is, um, if it's not listed here, then maybe you can find from 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 there like bylaws like how much uh, snow load that uh, you can use, and then that would be an input for like this one here user values and then you can input the specific um like values for that specific location so if it's not listed here then you can use this one here user values so for example in alberta and then uh, grand prairie and then importance factor if it's like uh, uh, low importance if it's normal importance or like um um Post disaster. So you have you have your four options here: the the, the low importance factor, normal, high, and uh, post disasters. So post disasters are for like um, hospitals or any um, emergency services uh, structure. And then for the roof geometry, your your pitch or the slope of your roof, and then plan uh, roof plan dimensions. For example, uh, say your um building is uh, 30 by 20 so 30 and then 20 and then if it's flat roof then zero or if it's like 3 to 12 then you can input the slope whatever is the slope based on the architectural plan and then from here this is the calculate actual calculation so this is the actual calculation so the snow load for ULS ultimate limit states is 38.8 for Grand Prairie and then for SLS, this is the uh, serviceability uh, limit states. This is ultimate. This is for the strength requirements. ULS um, in the US, that is the L, uh, LRFD. And then the strength requirements. And then this is the uh, serviceability requirements. So for, for deflection calculation, then you use the 
35 pieces of snow load. But for the strength requirements, like um, binding, shear, uh, you use the 38.8. And then, so once you knew the, the snow load, um, you can you can go back to this same same uh, website uh, jabacos.com and then you go to the seismic uh, analysis seismic load calculation so the same if if the if the project location is not listed in this um, or selected uh, sites then uh, you can use the user values and then you can input your own uh, spectral response acceleration values if uh, if it is listed then you can say uh, alberta then again um grand prairie and then site class if it's uh, still so well like cohesive then you can use uh, um class b and then again the importance factor if it's normal low high or post disaster uh, importance factor and then your system if it's like uh, if it's a steel then or concrete or timber masonry or coal form steel and then moment frame for the system if you have moment frame um brace frame so for this video series we will be designing a wood frame building see this will be a timber material and then the system would be shear wall so this is a wood based shear wall and then uh, weight you can leave this as one and then the height say um three meters and then or for the weight you can actually calculate for the actual weight and then you input it here but we typically use just uh, one there and then whatever is the value here you can multiply this for the weight of that specific um um wall line i would say so for example so like i said so this this one here this is your this is your um building footprint and then you are designing this particular wall here then using the tributary this is this weight here this load here would be going to this particular wall then from the seismic load calculation instead of putting the actual uh, instead of putting the actual weight here you can just leave it as one and then this is your factor like 0 0.03 and then when you when you calculate for the actual uh, seismic load then just multiply 0 0.03 or whatever the value here times the weight of your wall so for example on this one on this uh, sample um building then 0 0.03 so your load so your load there would be w is 0 0.03 times whatever the weight so we say the weight of the total uh, assembly here like roof um all the like if there is rooftop unit say say 100 kilo newton then 0 0.03 times 100 so if your weight is 100, see it's the same. That was like the 0 0.03 that was rounded off. So the actual value is only 2.68 instead of um, if you are using the, the, the um, one unit uh, weight, right? So if you are using the uh, one unit weight, one kilonewton, so the, the um, factor would be 0 0.03. The actual is only 0 0.0268, and then if you multiply multiply the hundred kilonewton, then it will give you um, two point two point sixty eight instead of the three kilonewton. So again, it's either you input the actual weight here, or just input one, and then because this is this is uh, useful if you just input here like just one kilonewton it is useful if you have for example a, a bigger uh, bigger um, building area with multiple walls like you have interior shear walls i'm i'm talking about this wall here 
So the tributary here would be this one. So instead of going back to the uh, website and then input the weight, um, it's better to just use the 0 0.03 and then multiply whatever is the weight for this tributary. And then again, for this particular wall, then just for this particular wall, then multiply the weight calculated from this uh, tributary area. So it's it's easier that way if you just input one kilonewton instead of, you know, inputting each, um, each weight for each tributary. So, I mean, you can do it, but uh, that on my, like when I do calculations uh, for, for seismic, I'll just input one uh, instead of the actual weight. So in, so in that way, I will only calculate the uh, I will only uh, do do calculations for the um, seismic just once. I will just get the the I will just get the factor which is uh, point point um, zero three or uh, point to uh, point to six point zero two six eight the 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 actual value, but it was it's rounded rounded off because you are only using one uh, kilonewton for the weight. So you just um, I will just use this one. And then multiply uh, corresponding uh, weight for for each tributary, um, for each share wall location. For the actual uh, for the actual uh, sizing of members like uh, beams, uh, walls, uh, uh, opening headers or uh, posts, then I usually go to the um, warehouser. So if you if you search for forty web, and then this one here, click on this one forty web. So this is a free uh, free uh, design tools for warehouser products. So of course it's their software. Then you have to you have to um, specify um, warehouser products as well. So um, if you don't have an account with them. Then you have to create one, and then so I already created earlier. So when you log in uh, to Forty Web, then uh, this is the 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 user interface. So for new projects, you you have here new file. Say uh, design of one story uh, building. So on this one, you have to select the uh, governing code uh, wherever your project is located. So in Alberta, we are still using the 2015 uh, National Building Code, which is the reference for the two, uh, 2019 Alberta edition. So you have to select NBC C 2015. And then uh, for manufacturer for for the connectors that uh, you are going to use in your uh, details i usually or i always use uh, simpson strong tie because i am familiar with it when i was still the, um, in the philippines uh, we were we were when we were designing uh, hotels in the us um we always specify simpson strong tie so i'm used to um, specifying these products i i know their products and uh, um, it's a matter of uh, preference also and local uh, um, availability. So if it's available in your in your area, for example, on my part, before I like um, I started working at the company, um, I used to visit uh, the hardware store, and then I will uh, um, check like whatever is the product uh, available there that I can specify because it's, sometimes you specify and it's not available locally and. It, it will take time to um, get those products. Uh, for example, from Grand Prairie, they have to source it from Edmonton or Vancouver sometimes. So there are also cases that instead of specifying, for example, a um, post cup for um, if you have a, a, a column and then you are looking for a post cup or post basis, and then uh, the, the product that uh, you specified is not available, then you have to make like a or you have to fabricate your own like um uh, connector then uh, you just have to do a, like modify your detail and specify like thickness of plate 
so in the in the job summary also this is the like if you already started designing like all the members it will it will show in here and then if you of course if you want to print now for for the wind loading so you have you have an options if you want to um input the the wind load um manually or you can just check on this one and then it will automatically apply for example if you are designing a a wood stud then it will apply um you just have to um make sure that um if if this one if you check on this one this is only applicable for uh, exterior walls but in the case of interior walls where the specified wind pressure is only like 5 uh, psf or it depends on uh, what how much is uh, specified in your specific uh, um building code or um in your in your area but in alberta building code uh, it's uh, 5 uh, psf sometimes i check this one sometimes not but most of the time i'll just check on this one here so if you if you um let the um software calculate for the actual wind load um by the way i i i check this one i compared the result uh, from from this um um from from 40 web and compare it with jabacos the the there's only like about one percent two percent difference between the between the calculated uh, wind pressure which is which is negligible so again um if you are in alberta so check alberta and then location grand prairie then this is the um q one in 50 years uh wind pressure 0.43 this level so the building class if you are make sure that you consider the, or you check or you select the the, the correct uh um building class uh it, like of your project so if it's a residential then you choose residential the difference here is um for the live load for the live load um, for example if you choose uh, residential then the default load would be for residential uh application like for for example when you design a joist right when you design a joist then um the default load would be 40 psf for the live load but if you select um, commercial then the default load would be 100 for the live load and then there is the automatic uh, concentrated load like 2000 pounds um like along the length or if you combine them or not but um it will give you an option also so say if this is like a commercial then you select commercial uh then importance category normal and then this is the ridge height so you input the ridge height this is for calculating the um if you go back to uh jabacos and then wind load primary structure so so your your um this one ridge height and if height um from from this information and then uh it will uh, calculate um, automatically the uh, reference height which is used in uh, calculating for this um for this value cei see this h here so that is uh, the reference height of your building so going back to 40 web so say your ridge height is 30 30 feet and then your eve height is 20. this information you can get this from from your um, architectural plan and then for exposure category you select either op it is in open area uh, rough terrain or intermediate terrain so if it's like in in in, uh, in, in the farm like open field then you select um, open terrain now for the um if you are ready to design any members you just click this one here add members and then you will be um selecting if it's a floor member or roof or walls 
or like this freestanding pose. So in the future, in future videos, we will be um, checking or we'll be using this all of these um, um, all of these uh, items here, like for the floor, for the roof, for the walls. But for this particular uh, project, we will be uh, designing just the roof and wall because this is a one-story building. But in later, in uh, in future uh, video series, we will be discussing like probably up to um, up to six stories wood frame or maybe four we'll see but um um the, the steps in a way is the same it's either a two-story or three-story or four-story building it's like the the procedure on how you design using the 40 web is the same just make sure that uh, you link or if you link the load then you link the correct one so for example if you design for example uh, floor joint if this is a floor joist right so deflection criteria you have high improved code minimum i usually um select a uh, code minimum which is 360 live load and uh, 240 for the uh, live load and then um span say 15 feet you click on if you want to see the diagram you click on this one here see so you will see the diagram so if it's clear span then it would be the inside to inside uh distance of your support if you, if it is out to out then it would be the uh, of course outside the dimension and then uh, custom if you want to say um on this side this is center and then on this one this is left see left and then center or if you want to see if you want to change this to outside dimension then just select right then it would change the um location of your like dimension reference so i will show you like how to use each um like um design uh, element here like floor roof once we uh, start uh, the actual uh, design of the building so most of the time um for example for wood frame um or any other structural elements um if it's the i mean the calculation is the same like over and over again so to be more efficient um from time to time i will make a spreadsheet uh, for its uh, structural element that i'm going to design and then by next time then it will just be like really quick uh, you know automated uh, calculation instead of doing doing it by hand again so for example on this one when i calculate for like uh, if i design a foundation for um pre-engineered building it's not usually supplied like the factored load then i just have this uh, um calculation like different load combinations so in this in this way i don't have to you know uh, do it manually like every time there's a there's a um project like pre inch building project and we are only um our scope is only to design the foundation so uh, there also um i have some um even even like uh, for the wind load and uh, snow load calculations i also created uh, i created my own uh, spreadsheet um that i used uh, for example like this uh, share wall uh, the force transfer around opening method uh, this is what i used when i designed the um, six-story wood frame building with lots of openings and then um, even just simple calculating the moment of inertia so sometimes when i do like a reinforcement for a or like a retrofit for a like a wood beam and then you have to reinforce it with a steel plate then uh, even calculating the the the, the moment of the I, I did some uh, I made like a quick uh, spreadsheet for that one so every time I calculate for moment of inertia, I don't have to you know it, it 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 takes time to calculate for example if you have like a u shape um um built up uh, section and then you you do all the you know transfer area so I made a spreadsheet for that one and then I have also for like this one uh so this is similar to 
So because the only the only item that I I added on this one is I included the um, so if you have the wind pressure for your roof, if you design for like roof cladding or four lens uh, hip and gable, four lens uh, mono slope wall cladding, wall girders in wall column. So this is basically for um, pre inch building. So when we have projects like uh, like a pre inch building, like a shop or a, a warehouse. Uh, we typically just um, um, when we design the foundation, um, it's not always, but most of the time, uh, when we prepare the foundation plan, the loads are not in yet. Like they are still uh, uh, sometimes bidding on the who, who supplies the, uh, uh, the the steel frame. So on my part, to get the uh, preliminary foundation design, I will just do my own calculation like a preliminary calculation like rough rough calculation for for the steel frame and then once i get the reaction and all the all the loads will be uh i will get from from this one here so for example uh, um internal pressure for for um liner sheet and then uh, okay it's no load it's the same and then uh, four lanes, if you design the four lanes or if you do some preliminary sizing of the four lanes, uh, just to get the, 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 the prelim like reactions, prelim weight of your building. So I, I, I made this spreadsheet just, just for that to get the, uh, an idea, for example, if you are calculating for the, uh, like um, the lateral, you are calculating for the lateral framing system, and then you want to know like how much uh, how much is the weight for the structure itself. So from this one, you can you can uh, you can size the the uh, structural members like core lanes, girts. You know, like how thick is your like if you are using like uh, cladding. You know, so this would. Uh, um, this would give you an idea, like the initial, like at the initial stage, the like idea of like how much, like possibly the building weighs, and then from there you can like using Jabacos to calculate for your um, equivalent uh, um, equivalent uh, lateral uh, method. Then um, you will have you will get the the seismic load, and then. Usually, I will just add percentage, say 10, 15 percent. It depends, and then then you can start your you can start your design. Once the building draw or the steel drawing is in, then you can compare that with your, uh, or you have to update your foundation design based on the final loading. So, like I said, I only do this for getting the preliminary um, building reactions. So. Um, another thing also is um, even for um, even for what we call this one the um, big load calculation. So I made spreadsheets on on that one as well. So for example, on this one, this is my um, spreadsheet for like calculating the dead load. So I have here the different like um, assembly. So for example, like uh, you just input the unit weight, and then for example, if your if your roof is like say um, asphalt shingles, then the unit weight is two psf, and then uh, just put one there. Um, I I I basically use this this portion here is for example, if you have uh, say two layers of plywood. And then uh, what we'll give you here is say, for example, if you select uh, this one, 5.8 or uh, plywood or 19, 30 second uh, OSB. And then if you have two layers, then just put two. Like that. So from here, I will know like uh, the, um, the weight of the, uh, say, roof assembly. And then on this one here, this is the, this is the floor assembly and then the wall assembly so from there i can get the, the the weight of the of the structure and then 
for for seismic calculation you have the tributary area for that particular shear wall or if you are designing the beam then you can multiply this weight of your floor or your weight of your roof um to the tributary area for for that particular uh, beam like i said this is just like a quick rundown of everything that uh, like um i used here like uh, references and uh, uh, resources and tools but the actual uh, actual uh, design um we will do the actual design uh, in the in the next uh, videos so we will be um uh, calculating for the for the dead load for the for the live load we will check how much is the live load depending on the occupancy and then um um wind load calculation snow load calculation uh, seismic calculation and then um, analysis of the structure then design of the structure so for now um i think i will just uh, um end the video here and then uh, if you have if you have questions that you want me to or you have if you have a topic that you want me to discuss also in the next video just put it in the comment section